You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for October 12th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where Air Force Two really is currently parked at the airport, and Mike Pence really is currently 10 miles away at the country club doing a fundraiser because they are scared to death of Betsy Londergren. It's the professional left with Drip Glass and Blue Gal. We are so proud of her. She got arrested last weekend. Yay! And not for, like, dumb shit. (laughs) She got arrested for protesting the Kavanaugh confirmation and Mm -hmm. blocking a bridge. And she was interviewed. Uh, The interview is up at Crooks and Liars. I'll make sure there's a link to it at our... Actually, there is a link to it already at our Facebook page. And uh, we just want to shout out to her and let her know. We are so proud of her. We love you. They have reason to be scared of Betsy Londrigan. You should be afraid of her. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's because uh, of the voting record of Rodney Davis against uh, pre-existing conditions and for pharmaceutical companies. You know, it's really simple. I I swear to God, um, I just saw a Rodney Davis ad and I I thought it was a parody. Yeah. Yeah. Because Betsy Dirks and Londrigan's former employer. Spent a whole bunch of money on Lincoln's hat. It might not even be Lincoln's hat. This <laughs> scandal nearly broke the state of Illinois, and she had to go to Mike Madigan to get money to bail her out. Betsy Lonegren, Mike Madigan's crony. <laughs> like, that's it? <laughs> really? That's what you got? Okay, man. Socialist. Yeah, socialist. Because now, first of all, the idea that her former employer, okay, uh, wanted to buy Lincoln's hat. Do you know where we are? Are you aware yeah. of the place where we're at? Okay. Um, and it's it's just such a fucking Hail Mary from the toilet. You know, they, it is like, because really? they wanted to buy Lincoln's hat. Was, did she work for the Springfield Tourist Bureau or something? I, I think because it was probably the, the uh, library or the historical society. Historical and, or something, yeah. And going to Mike Madigan means you went, that just means you went to the state house to ask them for some funding to buy Lincoln's original hat to get to have in Springfield. <laughs> to get taxpayer money to bail out her horrible attempt to buy. As an- and <laughs> like, okay, you're, you're already three degrees removed from anything she did. Uh, yeah. Did uh, I question at the debate that's coming up this week, did you vote to take away insurance from my kids, Rodney? Yeah. Uh, okay, well, 11 well, times. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm, I'll, then we're yeah. done. Okay. <laughs> you can take Lincoln's hat and you can put it right where the sun don't shine there, Rodney. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and, and, but that's, he's so bad at this. And he, he looks, he just has that deer in the headlights look like, he does. oh my God, I'm going to look so bad. Yeah. Well, and so part of it is there's zero coattails yeah. in the governor's race. So. Oh, yeah. 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 Ron ate and, a big bag of dicks this week. And, and Rodney we'll Davis at the end of started. Show. Rodney uh-huh. Davis started, and this is getting into your Glenn Beck post, which I do want to talk about today. Oh, boy. Uh, class of 2010. Yeah. Rodney Davis rode a wave of Glenn Beck Tea Partyism uh-huh. and f- terror over death panels and all the lies that went on in 2009 from the Republican Party. And you know what? He uh, and, won by like 700 votes. And he won at a very low rate, right? And then incumbency and low turnout and so forth just carried him through and this is trump country so you this know, is he, trump country really so uh although you know there's a lot of people around here drift glass that never liked the tweeting no we never liked the tweeting never so- liked the tweeting. <laughs> rather not talk about politics thank you very much really because i remember two years ago you couldn't shut the fuck up about politics mm-hmm. what happened what changed so we're still we're still not over it with the uh, Kavanaugh uh, confirmation, by the way. No. Um, well, do you want to introduce our two new sponsors? Well, let's start with our two new sponsors and get into some of this politics talk. All right. Well, this week our we have a new sponsor called, and they're working on the name, so they're tinkering, they're working on it twenty four seven. But right now, the working title of their pr- new beautiful product, it's beautiful, it's powerful, it's so beautiful and powerful, <laughs> is the significant other Trump trauma snooze alarm. See. <laughs> 
these invented days. Invented in our bedroom. In our bedroom. <laughs> it's, it's invented locally. We're looking for funding. Um, <laughs> these days, is your loving spouse or significant other asking you, are you okay? Are you sure you're okay? So often it's getting to be a thing. Well, just hit the button on your solar-powered American-made significant other Trump trauma snooze alarm. Shut down their well-intentioned queries for a few hours. That's And and you kind of can get what the story was. There I yes. was, sitting in bed knitting, finally relaxing, finally having a, <laughs> headphones on and enjoying some music. And Drift Glass pokes me in the side and says, are you okay? Yes. For, <laughs> for the, like the 15th time. That day. <laughs> that day. <laughs> in, in, my, in my defense, 13 of those 15 times. I had a, you were marginal. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, when I finally got to a little bit of relaxation yeah. and it was, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, like I had to say, uh, let's put a pause and a timeout on asking me if I'm okay. All right. Okay. And I thought, you know, <laughs> you know what, that'd be great. This should, this should be another fine American made product. It should. And mm -hmm. they're going to work on the name a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. And then Believe we have me, a, we have another this is, this one. Is this is a Broadway show or or it, off 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 Broadway coming. Well, it's, it's off off. They're they're trying it out out of town. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're being sponsored this week by the new hit musical. Uh, it's going to be new. It's going to be a hit. It's not really off the ground yet. But we're going to be sponsored by Fibber McGann's Closet. It's a co production of Blue America, Blue New York, Blues Traveler, and Thomas Gainsborough's Blue Boy. Fibber McGann's Closet is the classic feel-good story of a closet which is full to bursting with 30 years of Republican sins and atrocities and the Republican Party assworms who struggle to keep it shut. Don't open that closet, McGann. <laughs> Don't open that closet, Fibber. This is, this is an actual idea that we were floating around. Uh, you want to talk about it? We are thinking about holding for YouTube a meetup sometime over the winter at Lincoln's Tomb here in Springfield, where we will officially bury the party of Lincoln. Uh, maybe the day after the election. I don't know. We'll have to see about that. Yeah. Well, the party, my thinking is the party of Lincoln is already long, long, long dead. Mm -hmm. And it's deeply disrespectful not to bury it. Whether mm -hmm. things go well, as well as we hope or not come the election, the actual party of Lincoln is long since dead and deserves to be put out of its misery and interred finally once and for all. Um, and it might be a chance for some people from the Midwest to come in actually do a political event of some symbolic value. Lincoln's tomb literally is three miles from our house. Um, and it is highly appropriate that it happened where the, where actual Abraham Lincoln is actually buried. So anyway, if you have some thoughts on this or think it's a terrible idea or it's too soon, because you know, Lincoln was a tragedy, man. Why are you doing this? Um, <laughs> Then let us know those too. Anyway, I think we also have to find out what the rules are about photographing and holding events like that at Lincoln's tomb. I'll bet there we have to. Well, I happen to out. know some of the people out there, uh, even the living ones. I, I know a couple of the living ones out there, and they have a parking lot. So, well, yeah, you can go there as a tourist, but exactly. I don't know filming oh, an event or filming a YouTube or publishing a thing. I don't know what we wouldn't be actually going inside and you know doing. Um, um, parallel bar jumps and flips off of Lincoln's okay. tomb, I promise. Okay. Uh, yeah. But it should be right. you know, within the frame of the photograph, and we can point with great distinction, this is the place where um, America's second greatest president is buried. The party that, bear his, that bears his name has long since died, and it's time that the actual um, end of the party catch up with the name of the party. Right. Who's the greatest president? Oh, Washington. Oh, really? Okay. Without because, Washington, because there is no. Yeah. Without well, Washington, there is no United States. Yeah. So I'm, you know, Lincoln is is it's a close second because without Lincoln, there is no Union. Um, but it's uh, it's it's hard to say that the the creator of the United States, the person who really did stamp the U.S. into existence and step down after two terms and set the protocol for ever, um, is not the he's the irreplaceable one. Yep. Anyway. And I learned something. Interesting about another great president this week, um, Roosevelt. I went and looked up uh, FDR and how he stack, how he wanted to stack the court, and how that didn't happen. Uh, there was a, he put a bill uh, into the Congress for them to pass, and it was uh, held up by a very powerful committee chairman, a Southerner who didn't want it to happen, and he just held it up forever. Uh, but the bill that they had to allow Roosevelt to add Supreme Court justices to the court 
was uh, stated that as long as there was a Supreme Court justice who was over 70 who would not retire, then Roosevelt could appoint an extra justice for each one of those people. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was kind of interesting because we definitely have, you know, a lot, yeah. the notorious RBG. And uh, yeah, you know, everyone is aging and, and <laughs> there certainly yeah. are enough senators who are over 70 at this point. Um, that would be nice, too, is just be able to elect an extra senator for every senator that's over 70. <laughs> Your emergency backup senator. Your yeah. emergency backup senator, but give it to a blue state, you know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but you can't really do that because 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 appointing senators is fucking golden. You know, it's yeah. It's fucking golden. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a, uh, by the way, that's a uh, Rob Blagojevich uh, shout out callback. Yep. So yep. See, we got it all today. We, we got, got it all today. today. Rob Blagojevich yeah. wanted to replace Barack Obama's Senate seat by selling it. And he went to jail for that. So. Yeah. And so many other things. Yeah. Yeah, and he was just more obvious about it than you're he allowed was. to be. I mean, I really do think that, you know, people make have discussions and so forth without saying, I'm fucking golden, I'm going to sell this thing or I'm going to give it to myself. Yeah, yeah. on on tape. <laughs> While the feds are recording you. See, it All was right. his tone that was the problem, Blue Gal. That was <laughs> <laughs> you made me laugh, you son of a bitch. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our notes. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh is now Supreme Court Justice. We uh, will forever write his name with an asterisk next to it. Yep. Um, and the next two items on our list are really, to me, have a gender component to them. One definitely does. Um, this stupid civility debate now that we have, we're yeah. all of a sudden back to this, and uh, a couple people got just raked over the coals, um, David French in particular today on Twitter uh, for saying there's just no comparison between uh, Trump's rallies and people actually interrupting people at dinner to their face and threatening them in an Antifa way. You know, the, the mob behavior of the left is just there's no comparison. Uh, honey, that's, and, that's President David French to you. Yeah. <laughs> Because this is a, a side, this was the clown that uh, Bill Crystal recruited. Yeah. He was going to come in and save the save us all from Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Two equally yeah. horrible choices. I got, got, I got a guy. I got a guy. His name's David French. You've never heard of him, but he's awesome, and he's going to save us all. And uh, yeah, he's going to do tax cuts for billionaires and hide his racism. Right, right? right. That's the point. Right. So and now David French is is horrified that citizens are accosting in a violent way people eating dinner and just eating dinner yeah and uh you know the whole antifa thing and it's just horrible and does nothing compared to you can't you can't compare that to a trump rally where no one is endangered and everyone on twitter went you know donald trump's president of the united states and he's leading chants of Lock her up. That's kind of an authoritarian threat to democracy, yeah. David. French. And remember, so, the, remember when the, your entire party, David French, uh, put on funny hats and started calling themselves Tea Partiers and showed up in public yeah. parks, strapped with and automatic weapons, screaming about the blood of automatic tyrants. weapons. Remember that? Yeah, remember that? a lot of tyrants. Of course he does. A lot of tyrants. That no, that is you're not allowed to remember this shit on the right. You're not allowed to remember the context for anything. Mm -hmm. So you end up with idiots like this saying stupid shit, and you end up with Michael Gerson. In the Washington uh, Washington Post today, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in this week's episode of Tone Police, <laughs> yep. Michael Gerson. I have a, a Photoshop of him as uh, as Joe Friday. Mind your manners, liberal. Yeah, um, and it's just he's in there saying Democrats are playing with fire. Uh -huh. uh, one measure of the effectiveness of a political movement is how it changes its opposition. And President Trump is in the process of driving portions of the Democratic opposition insane. Uh huh. Uh huh. Now, it's, now it is. It is good and mad. It is Rebecca Traister's book. The anger of women is something that people like Michael Gerson cannot deal oh, with. No. no, and it is. It is. And I took the whole thing apart. And I won't bore you with each little smelly part of it. That it's just. It's perfect. It's got both siderism. It's got remembering Franklin Roosevelt as being the model of sort of civil tones oh, never take yeah. them on. like really yeah. really he, he welcomed their hatred I, I like, and so it's just 
it's, it's a big, stupid turducken. It's dumb on top of dumb on top of dumb, written by an asshole who should never have a column in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that caught my eye, because I'm a weirdo in this way, is just that first paragraph. Because Democrats are playing with fire is from Michael Gerson yesterday. Michael Gerson, tone police, Democrats, getting out of hand, man. They're gone crazy. They're insane. All right. Let me read you one more thing, okay? Okay. The Pelosi Democrats, <laughs> are they going to become the stupid party? Are Democrats about to go insane? Are they about to decide that the reason they lost in 2002 is they didn't say what they really believe? Are they about to go into Paul Krugman land? Lambasting tax cuts saying savaging Bush is a tool of corporate bosses? Are they about to go off, the, off on a jag that will ensure them a permanent minority status in every state from North Carolina to Arizona? David Brooks, 16 fucking years ago. Yep. It's yep. always these beltway, centrist, reasonable, serious, scolding, school marming, finger wagging fucks who cannot stand the idea of liberals, especially liberal women, yep. punching back. And men. Cannot you stand you left it. out men. They're all men. Oh, they're all men. They're all <laughs> pale, pasty white men. Yep. And it, it terrifies them when liberals, especially liberal women, the Pelosi Democrats, punch back yep They're perfect. and run out of fucks and run out of politeness and finally say enough we're done mm -hmm. uh and so uh on the other side of the republican scale the less refined less uh east coast privileged um lock her up is now yeah. the all-purpose wingnut yes. trump rally chant right whether right. it's pelosi or clinton or diane feinstein that was the one that was <laughs> That got yeah. a lot of people wondering, huh? But it's just something we say. You know, it's a thing we do. It's a thing we say. It's a, it's a way we hate women. That's how we hate women. As the, yes. as the mafia might say, it's our thing. Um, uh, Trump has assured his followers that a murder of a Washington Post reporter will in no way interfere with the Trump family making money in Saudi Arabia, including the in-laws. Yeah. Let's face it. This is about building and maintaining profitable Trump properties mm -hmm. in Saudi Arabia. Yep. And it could and it's absolutely clear there's we're not going to interfere with me making money over the over the murder of some guy who's not even a citizen. He just live right. here as a citizen? No. Um who was a Washington Post reporter and a resident alien and was living here legally. Uh and and, was, and, and tortured and dismembered yeah. inside an embassy. I mean this even Fox and Friends, even Fox and Friends yes. said this morning, Friday, uh, no, you know, he really can't let this lie. This is yeah. really bad. I predict a lot of panda sex news tonight on Fox. Panda sex news on Tucker. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in Georgia, the man in charge of voter suppression is also running for governor. Guess which party? Guess which party? And Guess well, this, which party? This loops me back just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't mind, to uh, yeah. a, an article uh, I wrote uh, about Michael Gerson. <laughs> <laughs> we always come back. Yeah. It keeps yes. dragging me back. What yes. happened? What happened? Um, well, he, he just, one of the many, many, many stupid things that he talked about uh, in his stupid fucking column was, you, this may be fighting fire with fire, but it's also playing with fire. And he talks about, you know, everyone knows how the Electoral College works. Everyone knows that, that gerrymandering is done. This is sort of like, this is the game we play. Complaining about it is like being a bad sport. But this sentence caught my eye, as, it, as mm -hmm. stuff like this does. When both parties regard electoral losses as indicators, an indication of electoral fraud and theft, our nation will enter a new stage of fragility. It will become easier to surrender to the irrational, to practice harassment and humiliation, and turn to verbal and physical violence. Here's the problem. All of the Republican complaints about Democrats stealing votes in elections are fucking fairy tales. Yep. They're all shit yep. Republicans made up. The mm -hmm. reason I know that is one of the many, many, many studies that said there is no voter fraud was done by the George Bush administration when Michael Gerson was part of the George Bush administration. Right. Meanwhile, right. at the same time, as we are speaking right now in Georgia, the secretary of state who is running for governor is stealing the election. He's, doing he's making the, the minority vote disappear. He is. And it's, yeah. he's not the only one. That's just the one that happens to be crossing the headlines today. The two parties are not comparable. And if Michael Gerson says they are, Michael Gerson should be fired. Because the rest of the column is just disgusting and smarmy and the typical assholeish behavior by people who just you know want to sit above the process 
a process they helped destroy. Mm -hmm. And my big question for people like that is, wait a minute, when did it become my fucking job to rein in your rabid dog? Yep. Your, yep. your policy, as I understand it, is is waving your finger and, and moralizing and hectoring and not using ab abusive terms. You've been doing this for 25 years. Glenn Beck is still around. Uh, Sean Hannity is still here. Uh, 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 Rush Limbaugh is still on the air. Laura Ingram is still here. Fox News is still up and running. And Donald Trump is still president. Yep. How is that working out for you there, Michael? How is that fucking brilliant? But so, so since you're not competent to to police your own toxic waste stuff that you created, you just sit on the sidelines and bitch about the job we're doing cleaning up your fucking mess. So here's an idea. Why don't you shut your fucking hole and go watch a movie? Like, I don't know, Shut Up and Sing. That's a nice movie. It has to do with a whole bunch of liberals who had a house dropped on them when they said a mean word about your favorite president, George W. Bush. How about that? Uh, my personal hero of the week is a man named Jacob Aronowitz. He is a uh, campaign field worker uh, working in Texas for Mike Siegel, who is running for the Texas 10th District Congressional Race uh, as a Democrat. And uh, Mr. Aramowitz uh, went to the courthouse in his district, in the 10th District, uh, to d drop off a letter uh inquiring about voting rights for a historically black college in the district, Prairie View A&M University. Oh, yes. Yes. We saw this last yeah. night. And he dropped off the letter and uh, was uh, arrested by a county sheriff's deputy uh, after the deputy asked him, which party are you? Mm -hmm. um, it turns out that the candidate, Mike Siegel, is also a civil rights attorney. <laughs> Row, you know, you really should announce that before you go and do shit. You should, you should have to knock and say, "Civil rights attorney coming through." Yeah, civil rights attorney coming yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. And no, yeah, just get in, like civil rights attorney. Jewish, <laughs> Jewish field worker for civil rights attorney yeah. coming through. Yeah. And the problem is, Drift Glass, is that they have gutted the Civil Rights Act, and right. Texas there is, there knows is no. it, just like right. Georgia knows it. Georgia wouldn't be allowed to do any of this under the reporting laws of the of the previous Civil Rights Act that were struck down because John Roberts said, we don't need this anymore. Just like we didn't need Reconstruction. Now we don't need that shit. Right. The South will behave itself <laughs> five minutes later. The South will totally behave itself five minutes later. Yes. This is what's going on. They're arresting young Jewish men who are trying to get voting rights for black people. Where have we heard this before? I know this one. I know this. One. It is so bad. It is so bad. It is just like 1963 all over you know, again. I know the answer to this, the but same. But the, the memory yep. and vision of Alex Trebek uh, drunkenly screwing up his job as of moderating a debate has sort of <laughs> fried all of my Jeopardy question and answer circuits. <laughs> So I don't really know the answer to anything anymore. I'm just going to guess. He, did, he went off on that tangent about the Catholic yeah. Church that for like 10 minutes. We don't grow up little boys where I come from. And then <laughs> uh, yeah, all I know are like the standard um, trivial pursuit answers. I know Eisenhower, Kennedy, Hemingway, golf. That's pretty much the answer. If that's that's not, the 50s. If that's not the answer to the questions, I don't know what, I don't know the answer to anything anymore. Yeah. yeah no, this guy. Oh my god. Yeah, and this yeah. and and this particular uh region, this particular college region is notorious for this. They have been violating yeah. the rights of their students to vote where they live for what 25 yeah. years now, 30 years now, yeah. since the 60s. Yeah. yeah. But they just keep doing it. And at some point, the mighty hand of a wrathful god will wipe out everything in that town except the college. Right. 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 Um but for now, we just have civil rights attorneys sneaking in there, just pretending like they're going for eggs and milk, and then they show up. <laughs> and they send their Jewish boys in there, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and then we have to arrest them. Mm -hmm. Do you have a warrant for that? No, see, you're the cop. You need the fucking warrant, asshole. <laughs> yes, oh, exactly. Right. And then that's they held right. his phone. They kept yeah. his phone for a few extra hours because they're dicks. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is national news now, and as Rachel Maddow said last night, don't you feel like the screen should be black and white right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, I do. And I agree with Charlie Pierce. You know, Charlie Pierce and I just don't get along at all. Oh, you know, you, just you, you know, two, you two have bar fights all the time. Yeah, we do. 
But I agree with him that we should be having, and he's quite serious, have UN inspectors in Georgia, the state, oh, not absolutely. the country. Absolutely. Uh, and he also used the word, so he, bad. he also used the word, the Hague this morning yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. I've been, I've been saying that about uh, family separation at the border for a long time. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Uh, well, Paul Krugman uh, would like everyone to know, we'll put a link up that the GOP healthcare strategy, this is going to surprise everyone is now based entirely on lying about everything. Yep. But what they stand for, what Democrats stand for, black is white, up is down, is completely, it's all lies. And the thing about having every one of these stories, every one of these problems has the same trajectory. Mm -hmm. You get to the point where you start going, well, this is how, oh, yeah, the entire Republican Party are full of reprogrammable mm -hmm. meatheads. Mm -hmm. So nothing will happen. It doesn't matter what we say. doesn't matter what we do. doesn't matter how clever we are. doesn't matter if we show them the facts. They're going to wave their little hands, scream fake news, stick their head up their ass, and ignore it. Mm -hmm. So the only thing to do is overwhelm them electorally. Yep. They have to be swept from power and kept from power until they're gone because they're never going to recover from this. And this is the election when we start to do that. This is where, you know, from my lips to whoever's in charge, um, we learn the lessons from 2006 and 2008. We don't win and then go, well, that's done. Yeah, right. And right. move on to solving actual problems which we need to solve. We we have to start taking electoral victory as an opportunity to destroy the Republican Party. Yep. Yep. We have to. And we can't just say, well, we're not going to impeach anyone now that we've won. No, no, we're really going to have to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my mm -hmm. friends on the other side of the aisle, you have no friends on the other side of the aisle. I'd love it if you did, but you don't. And quit saying you do because it misleads people into thinking that they can compromise with people who believe compromise itself is weakness. So stop doing that. This is the election when we start start turning that around. Uh, Eric Holder gave a speech to a bunch of campaigners in which he disagreed with Michelle Obama on camera. And uh, this this has been taken out of context and exploded as violence on the left over at Fox News. where the Eric, tone cops. The tone, co well, the tone cops. Well, Eric Holder said, when they go low, we go high. When they go low, we kick them. Right. And... He wasn't saying kick people, <laughs> but no. uh, that, you know, you're going to have this uh, angry black man uh, line, you know, this is gonna be, it's, it's, it's the Pocahontas smear. And now we're going to have the angry black man, Eric Holder, who wants to kick white people. Repeated uh, one repeated million times. One million times. Yeah. yeah. And, but, but as we say on the professional Life podcast, when they go low, we go for the jugular. Go for the jugular. And what we mean that is electorally, and we're going right. to do it. Okay. Yes. Moving on. Uh, Trump apologized on behalf of our nation to Kavanaugh for the terrible pain and suffering that he and his family endured during the confirmation process. Uh, and he called it a hoax, you know, as he always does. Um, I was actually in knitting while he was doing this. I was at my knitting group, and it came across my phone, and I happened to look at it, and I just announced to all of my knitters, um, my knitter friends, uh, Trump has apologized to Kavanaugh for the terrible pain and suffering. And you could hear the eye rolls. Yes. And it was, I was surprised. It was universal because we ha have a variety. We don't have any hardcore Trumpers that are willing to say so in knitting. But mm -hmm. we have a couple of people who uh, will say things like, well, you know, 2016, it really wasn't much of a choice. Right. And I want to smack him, it. you know, but and, and I, don't, I don't like the tweeting. I yeah. And like I don't the like the tweeting. We've got a couple. Mm -hmm. I don't like the tweeting. So uh, this was but this was just like, oh, you're kidding. You know, universally, uh -huh. just stop gaslighting women. Just stop and it. Then, you know, and then called the entire thing a hoax yeah. set up by the Democrats. Oh, yeah. And, and there are still people today insisting that. Ford was paid by Soros and Soros. You know, secret secret payments and all this will come out. I'm sure it will. You know, yeah. Just like Solyndra and baby parts and all the other total lies that Republicans so, tell to have this oh, mythology Solinsky, honey. It's the dead hand of Solinsky yeah. manipulating it. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Dr. Ford, since you mentioned her, has not been able to return to her home due to constant threats yeah. from, I don't know, probably uh, liberal kickers, I'm guessing. No. Would, that be the, no. would that be who she's being threatened by? Or is it the same people who threatened to kill the Dixie Chicks back in the Bush administration? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's probably that latter group. 
Meanwhile, uh, two Arizona Republicans tried to make a donation to the Demo- to a Democratic congressman as members of the Communist Party in an attempt to link him to the far left. Yes, this is the part that's. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. No, no. <laughs> These guys were uh, on their way to a Mensa meeting. No, they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Retest. And came up with a great right idea. You know what we should do? You know what we should do? And now everyone in their little social group thinks they're communists, which I think is awesome. Well, and uh, there is video uh, up at Crooks and Liars. This was a Guardian story. But uh, the woman who is the financial manager of the campaign in Arizona to which these two geniuses donated money in the name of the Communist Party. Um, yeah. I, first of all, <laughs> communist, really? That's yeah. That was your I think idea? That, well, I think it was like the, the Communitarian Party. I see. But it's really the Communist Party. Communist. We'll trick them we'll that trick way. We'll trick them that way and, and, yeah. and expose them. As taking yeah, they brought money in a jelly jar full of coins, which left, is great. Taking yeah. money from the far left. Uh, yeah. This is a district that Donald Trump carried, and now it leans Democrat. Yeah. Uh, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> Part of which is the Arizona Republican Party has a whole, apparently at least two uh, James O'Keefe wannabes. Because um, <laughs> I want to be smart, like James O'Keefe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. They they kind of haven't figured out how stupid James O'Keefe is. Yeah, Fredo one and Fredo two. Fred, that's so. exactly right. I'm smart. I'm smart. And and so this woman who is the the financial director of the campaign to which they donated money, uh, in a in a show of I thought terrific courage, took took the money that it was apparently they brought it in jars, yeah. um, and uh, brought the cash back to the Arizona Republican Party office and walked in. And who should walk out of an office but one of the guys who had been over to drop off this Ah, communist ah, money. ah, We've got him now. Ah. Oh, Oh, wait. She showed up at our door. You know, they farted in those jars first. Yeah, uh-huh, they did. Uh-huh, they farted uh-huh, in the jars yeah. too. So, and she yeah. said, "Oh, this is one of the people that came over. What is his name?" To the lady at the front desk, found out that these two guys used a false name, which is against federal election law, <laughs> uh, because they wanted a receipt for the money so they could prove it. Uh-huh. Uh, and this, uh, the policy of the campaign, very smartly, is we send. Uh, receipts via email. So uh-huh. we need your email address and we need uh, your name and, and your occupation. And, you know, when you donate online to Blue America or whatever you donate to, right? you have to provide that information and you have to testify that the, this information is true. And so you had to fill out that form and give the email to get a receipt and so forth. And they'd given false names and false information. And I guess... <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if they put as their email, you know, joe at azgop.com. Yeah. yeah. What's your profession? What's Super your profession? genius. <laughs> but, but they're rat fuckers. And this is yeah. how they cheat. And they're they, bad at it. And they're bad at it. And, and they, this, this. Well, when you're in a party dominated by stupid people who think they're clever, yeah. eventually the inbreeding reaches the point where they get this dumb. Well, except they keep getting away with it, like with voter suppression. And, uh, you know, yeah. it, this thing in Georgia and, and other states, it's happening everywhere. Yeah. To try to suppress the vote, to try to make sure black people can't vote in 2018. It's it's so obvious that this party is dying and they're scraping by their fingernails mm-hmm. and cheating to win. And then. <laughs> and yet, ironically, <laughs> yeah. ironically, Blue Gal. I know. The, the first lady of the United States is literally the most bullied person in the world. Do you care? I don't. <laughs> in the world, Blue Gal. You know, you could go further. You could say in the solar system because really uh, we're the only life that yeah. we know in the solar system. Because Melania Trump might be the most bullied person in the universe. Yeah. I d- that might be true. I so don't care, right? And because she says so. And I, I, I believe – um in a very dark and terrible way that when they draw the blinds at the white house, she is the most bullied person yeah. in that building. I really don't um, care. Do you? That's no, that's the name of the no. jacket. Yep. No. Yeah. All right. They all have to go. They all have to go. Meanwhile, down the hall from Melania, uh, <laughs> Donald Trump is playing the apprentice games 
with the job of attorney general again. Will I fire him? I don't know. Tune in next week. Let's find out. Again, I don't care. Don't care. I don't care. I care about the outcome. I care about the end game. But like very much like this, his 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 rallies are no longer covered live now. Mm -hmm. His Nuremberg rally. So he has to keep upping the ante. Soon they will be actually sacrificing human beings at these mm -hmm. things, I swear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a few Christians and the lions. Just kidding. They'll be Muslims. Yeah. Um, they're not citizens, right? The, yeah. Okay. Right. They're not citizens. And, I'm not but making he has fun to... of someone being assassinated. No. But Donald at all. Trump takes no. it that seriously. Takes it, you know, oh, they're not citizens. I mean, in the Oval Office, that was what he said. Right. Uh, right. And, and not only is he doing, playing these apprentice games to keep people interested in what he's doing. Uh, right. He apparently has all the time in the world to bullshit with anyone at Fox News who wants to talk to him on the air on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For, just rambling for hours. crazy shit. He spent yeah. he yep. spent almost two hours on the phone with Fox Fox News in separate shows this week. While there's a hurricane, mm -hmm. while there's children getting paralyzed by some disease that's that's very mysterious. Uh he had time to bullshit with Kanye West on camera, and he had two hours to talk to Fox News on the phone about nothing. And we're not going to talk about Kanye West. Nope. Because everyone else is, other than the title of our podcast, our working title is Taylor Swift Boating. Um, yeah, because I think Taylor Swift scared the shit out of a lot of people with the, her ability to get people registered to vote, yep. particularly in Tennessee. Uh, and, uh, Marsha Blackburn cannot be a U.S. Senator. I, I realize again, people are upset with Phil Bresden for saying nice things about Kavanaugh. I don't do care. Not want, don't I care. do not want Marsha Blackburn to be a U.S. No. Senator. And, and if you want, if you have a magic wand that you can wave, they'll create a 60 vote majority in the Senate and magically transform the voting profile of people in these States so that they'll vote, in Tennessee. For, they'll vote yep. for a Tammy Duckworth. Great. But I don't have that. So if you're hiding yeah. that from the rest of us, you're, if you're keeping these superpowers from the rest of us, that's very selfish of you. If you <laughs> don't have those superpowers, then work really hard where you are to create momentum, predicate, and argument, and electoral wave that will make it possible two years or five years or 10 or move to these places. But when you have the choice, as the saying goes, uh, a drowning man will reach for anything, even the point of a sword. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That's human nature. I wish it weren't true. Believe me, I wish it weren't true. But this is the world we now have. So Taylor Swift, in this case, freaked the shit out of the QAnon alt-right people who had built this entire mythology around mm -hmm. her being secretly one of them. You know she's a girl for us. You know she's on our side. When she said, don't just register to vote, but register to vote against this crazy... <laughs> Yeah, uh, because she Bill, does not represent, and she talked about values yeah, in her Instagram did. post. Yeah, it was all about her values as a citizen of Tennessee mm -hmm. and how Marshall Blackburn does not reflect those values. Mm -hmm. And you can't argue with that. That yeah. that it, If I talk about my values and what I value, that's not up for debate, no. what I value. Uh, you can have different values and you can have your, you can choose your own values, but you can't argue that I can't have those values. So, and they went uh, in, they had crying, screaming hissy fits yeah. because she, she, maybe she wasn't in possession of all that information she needed to do this correctly. Maybe she's <laughs> all the QAnon information. Maybe yeah. She's just stupid broad. Sort of thing. <laughs> maybe some living yeah. this letter, maybe someone hijacked her account. Well, maybe she thinks for herself and she figured out which side is the evil side. And to older yeah. people, my values and yours don't jibe. If you if you think uh, that my values are jibe with yours, here's how you should vote. She should have stayed neutral. This is unfair. And then, you know, 48 hours later, here comes Kanye West spouting yeah, crazy right. shit. Um, mm -hmm. And again, my and only- And that was planned before. That yeah. was planned before. But uh, Kanye West has a mental illness, and I'm not going to make fun of that. Uh, and the media, as Lawrence tweeted- Lawrence O'Donnell tweeted, look, you've got your marching orders from Donald Trump. You're going to cover the man in the red hat for 24 hours for two news cycles for the whole weekend. Uh, go right ahead. But he is Donald Trump is trying to prevent you from covering other right. things uh, like, for instance, how much money his dad gave him, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, things like that. Uh, and his incompetence at running this country. That's what he's trying to cover up. Uh, and the fact that his attorney general is allowing an investigation to go forward into 
his ties to Russia. Uh, all of those things, it is absolutely necessary for Donald Trump to distract his base uh, as long as he can to keep uh, raking in the dollars because he, he says he's losing money from being president. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And yet, uh, well, uh, he's out there making deals for Shelly Adelson. You want to talk about that for a minute? Well, I, I do want to mention that there is, as everyone knows by now, there is a Trump tweet for all occasions. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's a Trump tweet for, for uh, how Barack Obama is, is, is shaming America and ruining America by letting rap stars into the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's a Trump tweet for B B Barack Obama uh, betraying America by doing blah, blah, blah uh, when a hurricane is blah, 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 blah. Uh, you know, it's it's it really is. You can just go right through it. Every single thing this asshole says, he has said the exact opposite under entirely similar under, under similar identical circumstances because he doesn't believe anything. And that's that's and that is what gets you committed to an institution unless you have 60 million meatheads who are willing to just flip their brain one way and the other one way and the other, depending on what their dear leader says, unless you have trained to spend a really long time, like 30 years, training an army of brainwashed fascists. And that's what the Republican Party is. So as fun as it is to just pull, you know, pull the tweet of the day out and say, hey, remember back in 2013 when Trump said this and this and that and this and that, and it's the exact opposite. The terrifying part to me, and I mean truly terrifying, is there there are human beings within the sound of my voice, <laughs> or certainly within a, a three block radius of where we're podcasting, there are hundreds of them who who have who are unaffected by this entirely. This shit just bounces off of them. They ignore it. They roll their eyes. They get that glazed, dead eye look on their face, and they go to the polling place and they vote for Donald Trump. Yep. And they vote for Rodney Davis. They don't. They're not. I don't know what species they're a part of, but they are really working hard to flunk the human race, and that's scary. That is truly scary. Um, but getting back to Shelley Adelson. Yes, he uh, is donating more money to elect House Republicans. Uh, in part because Donald Trump spoke to the leadership in Japan about uh, a casino deal for Shelley Adelson. It is all being done in plain sight. Yeah. And by spoke to the leadership, we don't mean a subtle back channel query. No. We mean, oh, hey, Abe, how about you let me put up a goddamn casino here? Huh? What do you think, man? We're bros, right? We're bros. What about it? Shelley, my friend Shelley's a good, he's got a lot of casinos. He knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, and and uh, there are some people on Twitter who were surprised by this. <laughs> well, and and as long as he can pivot to the crazy, I mean, this is the week also that Donald Trump accused Hillary Clinton of colluding with Russia during the 2016 election, directly straight up. Uh, next week, he will accuse her of having a casino that failed, uh, call her a tax cheat who got all of her money from Donald Trump's father, and that she paid many porn stars to have sex with her. Yeah, uh, because it's just. Oh, what's the crazy shit I did in my life? I'll just say that she did it. It's again, it's on the level of intelligence of the communist party members who snuck a jelly jar full of coins in. It's that level of stupid. I mean, he really is that kind of blunt Neanderthal dumb as a fucking bag of hammers. But so are his followers and they love him for it. And again, that's what scares the shit out of me. Um, shall we talk about USA Today? Yeah, you did a nice little image of the USA Today circle with Trump's hair on it. And because the question is, <laughs> uh, did USA Today finally ruin its reputation for journalistic excellence? What? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> it's USA Today. It's, they don't have a reputation for anything except being slid under my door at six in the morning when I'm staying at a Holiday Inn. Right, right. Um, but they decided just because we're going to just, whatever Donald Trump spews out of his mouth, we're going to throw it on our op-ed page. And then we're going to apologize for it and fact check it later and then talk about the First Amendment and journalism. And they were raked over the coals. I mean, really. Well, and it got four million retweets because Donald Trump has 40 million Twitter followers. Ten percent of that decided to retweet his USA Today op-ed, which was literally full of lies yeah. about health care. Top to bottom. But it was it's very telling that he's lying about health care. Mm -hmm. I think that's sick. That's the yeah. significant part of this story, because he realizes that that's he or someone who's talking to him realizes that that's where they're getting killed, that this is the start of women's anger at Trump mm -hmm. is the access Hollywood tape. And then the fact that he actually got elected, those made us angry enough, but then the, the continual attempt to take away our health insurance and to almost succeed, uh, 
is terrorism yeah. against your your own people. Um, and I I just don't see why the Democratic Party hasn't stood up and said, "Listen, motherfuckers, Obamacare was the compromise." Right. You had a chance for compromise. That was it. Mm-hmm. And we're done. Right. You know, right. we tried compromise with you motherfuckers. We really did. We did. And it was called Obamacare, mm-hmm. and you screwed with us well, on that. Barack Obama walked the ball down to your 30-yard line. Right. And gave, and gave you, you that you. much of a compromise. And, right. But Mitch McConnell and the Republican leadership, and this moment, this moment you and I are sharing now, Blue Gal, this mm-hmm. is the moment where... If I'm with Republicans I know and we yeah. wander in away from, you know, high school and kids and travel and what's on the menu over to anything political and they start talking about, well, you know, presidents are bad, parties are corrupt, these things happen. This is the area into which I wander. No, see, that's not exactly true. <laughs> Here's yep. what actually fucking happened during the healthcare debate. Here's the compromise you were offered. Here's Barack Obama begging you at your own retreat to please do it your way, but it has to get done and being told to pound sand for eight years and then you assholes elected Donald Trump. So we're done compromising because we Mm -hmm. tried it. We tried a perfect laboratory experiment of what would be like if the Republican Party were treated with great respect and great deference and we're given every possible way of compromising at a time of great national crisis by a guy who would give them anything just to have them on board to solve a few of our larger problems. We had a perfect lab experiment, and you people fucked it up. You you said, ha ha, fuck you for being dumb enough to believe that we ever gave a shit about this, burned the lab down, and then nominated the birther guy. So we've tried it. We have all mm-hmm. tried it now. and And that's the point at which... If I'm talking to a Republican, they steer the conversation back to high school and blue bells and uh, and what's on the country menu. Country music. Because and, we don't want to uh, talk about the past. How about if, those if, cubs? Yeah. If you trick me into talking about the past, you'll make me look stupid. And then I might have to actually defend my position. So at that point, we get, you know, both sides are bad. And I can just, yeah. I can just see David Brooks and Michael Gerson pouring out of their mouths. That's where that poison went. That's where yep. 30 years of both siderism has gone. You know, the brains mm-hmm. of Republicans who don't want to talk about what they have done to their own party. State court judges may be able to steal migrant children and give them up for adoption to American families without actually notifying their biological parents. Yep. Stephen Miller is a a sadistic, sick person. He's a monster. He's a monster. And he really should be in, in, he should be in that Steve Buscemi. Psychiatric ward. Shackles with a mask over his face for the rest of his life. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he really ascended to a position of tremendous power in order to inflict maximum suffering on poor, innocent people. Yep. And he loves doing it. And people like that cannot be allowed anywhere near a position of authority, ever. And the Republican Party elevates people like this and then applauds them for doing it. And that's... So every time you say both sides do it, this is what I think. Um, The Trump campaign is now arguing that it cannot be held legally responsible for the WikiLeaks publication of their DNC emails because the First Amendment protects them, uh, protects their right to disclose information, even if it's stolen information. That's funny. Republicans didn't feel that way during the Iraq war about WikiLeaks. It's weird. It's so (laughs) weird. And and it's so weird that even if we stole it, even if we hired someone to steal it, it's, it's almost like if we were to break into the Democratic National Headquarters in like Watergate Hotel <laughs> and take shit, that really should be okay. That's our First there Amendment are, right. <laughs> there are no rules. There's no fucking rules. <laughs> and uh, yes, <laughs> and Mitt, Mitt Romney said, yep. you don't impeach Donald Trump because he is a, quote, sitting president. That- so you know what that means? The minute he stands up, we've got that son of a bitch. You better stay seated the rest of your life. It's the minute you stand, man. But you know why he doesn't stand, Blue Gal? You know why he never stands? Because he only stands to reason. (laughs) And there is no reason in that one. There's no reason at all. None. Um, The Russian troll factory. I just want to go back to Mitt Romney for a minute. What the hell was that? That was Mitt Romney. Just mad-libbing it. It, It's... I'm literally getting a headache right now from that. Like somebody, you don't, you can't impeach Trump because he's a sitting president. What does he think impeachment somebody is? Somebody slipped him a teaspoon of coffee and he went crazy. <laughs> he, okay. he tore off his magic underwear and said, "I'm the president. I'm the 
president? I don't know. I, I don't know why they, these people say or do anything. I, I know that Mitt Romney at some point wants to be elected to something. Yeah. He wants to and be elected can't... to the Senate from Utah. He's running for yeah. it right now. So, yeah, but, but he wants to be president someday or something else. But he he's he's got he does have a faulty circuit in his robot brain. Something is wrong there because um, it's like yeah. I mean he he could have said that I can think of about seventeen different ways yes. you could have said don't impeach Trump it's destabilizing or we can manage through or whatever. But mm-hmm. sitting president the whole point if a sitting president is committing right. a high crime or misdemeanor. The Constitution says impeachment is the remedy. You can't for vote that. for someone on a ballot, Blue Gal. That's crazy. <laughs> that's just crazy talk. And again, there's faulty circuit in the Mitt Romney. Okay, brain. that's it's got to be yeah. that. All right. Uh, the Russian troll factory. You know the one that was set yeah. up to to wreck our elections. Yes, um, and go on the Facebook and and go on the Facebook yeah. that uh, that was run by Yevgeny Prigozhin. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Known as Putin's cook. Okay. Uh, had rebranded itself as a media company because we're all media companies mm-hmm. now. Last year, with 16 new websites generating more than 30 million page views every month, and then someone set it on fire and burned it down. And you know what they used, Blue Gal? You know what they used? No, what did they use? Molotov cocktail. Did they really? Wow. Yes. A Russian troll factory was burned with a Molotov cocktail. So there's some weird poetic justice in the Russian soul after all. Yep. Uh, climate change is real and it's very bad and we've got about a decade to get it right and yep. we're not doing that. And there are apparently 10 companies in the United States that are responsible for the vast majority of carbon going into the air. Mm-hmm. Um, the Koch brothers own at least one of them yes. and it is they are investing in our government in order to keep this change at bay keep the change mm-hmm. in how we handle climate change at bay nikki uh, haley resigned of sort of yeah uh, well i, I do want to i want to put it as part of the climate change story yes the trump administration has said it will remove a ban on the summer sales of high ethanol gas that will allow year-round sales of gas blends with a lot of ethanol much higher than the epa says and this will cause uh, a big contribution to smog, you know, pollution, mm-hmm. you know, bad shit in the air on summer days. This is thought to be a reward to Chuck Grassley from Iowa <sighs> because he chaired the Senate Judiciary Committee and presided over Brent Kavanaugh's, the farce that put Brent Kavanaugh on the court. So in exchange for putting this creepy Republican lying blackout drunk, um, uh, let's say sexual assaulter. Mm-hmm. On the court, we're going to help Chuck Grassley fuck up the planet a little bit faster. That, in a nutshell, is the Republican way. That's the Republican Party. And everyone's going to get rich doing it, except for the people that will kill or immiserate or who will lose their rights because Brett Kavanaugh uh, wants to take their rights away from them. Also, the pro-Brett Kavanaugh dark money farm, (laughs) speaking of farms, uh, Judicial Crisis Network. Had leftover dark money, and so now they're doing pro Susan Collins ads. Say thank you to Susan Collins because she's a real leader. Susan Collins for Senate. I mean, we didn't say Susan Collins for Senate. We're just saying she's a real leader and she's great. And you should call her and thank her for being so awesome. She's it's so thirty awesome. second spots running a six figure ad buy in Maine. Uh, yeah. Pro Susan Collins, and they're not considered because- campaign ads or. Uh, you know, because Judicial Crisis Network is responsible for the content of this ad. We are a um, radically undertaxed country. <laughs> we really out. are. <laughs> There's way too many assholes with way too much money using it in in ways that are killing yep. us and killing our democracy and killing our planet. And we got it. We got to um, When we get power back, we're going to have to be swift and dirty mm-hmm. about it and clean and it out mm-hmm. quick, as if we've only got 18 months to do it. That's what I'm right. saying. Right. Well, you got to go, go, go. Got to go, go, go. Um, All right. Here in Illinois, uh, we weren't kidding. The GOP today sent in Mike Pence to fundraise for Rodney Davis because they're freaked out about how close he is to losing. Mm-hmm. Um, he is the special guest at the Panther Creek Country Club. Uh, full disclosure, I've been there before. Um, and the suggested donations range from 500 bucks to people, 270, 2700 for a VIP photo op, and 12700 for a platinum sponsorship. And it's weird when you see something in the paper and you know people's names. So that's that's just great. And yeah, I just I just tweeted to Mike Pence to let him know that I've already voted by mail for 
Rodney Davis's opponent because Rodney voted 11 times to take away affordable health insurance from my family. Yes, but, you know, Period. but that Lincoln hat thing, Blue Gal, that Lincoln hat, you keep ignoring <laughs> the whole Lincoln hat scandal. You liberals don't ignore the real scandal, the Lincoln hat scandal in favor of something like health care for poor people. I mean, that's just crazy. I think that uh, Betsy Londrigan should just put the picture of Rodney Davis with Mike Pence up mm -hmm. at her as her campaign website and say, here you go. I think she should wear a Lincoln hat in the debate and just say, fuck it. <laughs> Monday night is the debate. It this, is. This was one of the times when you had to ask me if I was okay. I did. Because I really wasn't okay. Monday night, this coming Monday, there is a debate between Betsy Londrigan and Rodney Davis. Mm -hmm. And you had an opportunity to get tickets for this I did. debate. And I do. And you do. And you have two tickets. And uh, I have a church meeting that night. Anyway, but I, I could get out of it or I could leave early and go to this. But I really emotionally don't know if I can sit in a room with Rodney Davis. Yep. And I've said to yep. you, I just. He's an abuser. I am to the point of beyond anger at him, not just because he blocked me on Facebook from commenting at his Facebook uh, website, but uh, because of his votes on health care yeah. for my family. Trying to take health care away he from he has worked to hurt me. And celebrated that fact. Literally. Yep. And celebrated with a beer beer in the Rose Garden. And uh, that was the day that <laughs> Betsy Dirks and Londrigan had the same feelings I did and decided That's to great. run. Right. Uh, and we are working for her. So um, that wasn't that long ago. How did, she, full disclosure. how did she have time to become a Mike Madigan crony in just the... <laughs> Very short time she's been running for office because she's never run for political yeah. office before. I'm just she didn't hold office. She, she was an aide as Rodney Davis was. Uh -huh. Rodney Davis got his start as an aide to Shimkus, right? Who's a terrible, terrible, person. terrible, terrible, another terrible, terrible Republican congressman. Ber Betsy Dirksen Londrigan worked for uh, Senator Durbin's office. Mm -hmm. Not, I mean, not complicated. She knows issues. She knows how to talk to voters. She knows how to uh, synthesize questions into policy proposals. Yeah. Uh, she has the skills she needs to be one member of a congressional delegation, right? Yep. Period. That's what you need. You need those skills. Yeah, I just don't know. I'm, I'd be proud to support her if, she, you know, I think she's going to have a lot of supporters at that debate. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't home. know if I can sit in the same room and just Stay listen home. to Rodney Davis try try to pretend he's a nice guy. No, I tell you uh, what, I, I'm just going to use that empty seat and put a giant Lincoln hat in it. <laughs> That'd be great. And just keep pointing. I have the... Just keep pointing at it. <laughs> And then doing that, that me and you, like two finger eye thing. I'm, I'm, I'm in your head, you, man. man. I'm in your head. <laughs> I, think, um, I think it should have Mike Madigan's Lincoln hat written across it, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and make noises like Cousin It in the Adams Family. <laughs> <laughs> Just the whole debate. Where's that coming from? Where's that coming from? Or We're going to get kicked I'd out I'd be the there. very tall man. <laughs> Yeah, um, you abnormally tall. Like should yeah, wear a yeah. very tall hat and ask the Republicans behind me, "Am I blocking your view? Can you see okay?" <laughs> you know, you should dress as Lincoln and wear a Betsy Londrigan T-shirt. Oh, that's a that's a really good idea. That is a really good idea because yeah. you're Betsy tall Lonergan enough. Button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. We're we're um, we're working on it. Also, here in Illinois. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Rauner did not acquit himself well in the gubernatorial no, debate. No, he did not. Uh, no, he made a couple of uh, s small mistakes. <laughs> I'm sure no one noticed. <laughs> I'm sure no one noticed the fact that he tried to take credit for the downstate school funding gains, which is the bill he actually vetoed. <laughs> he vetoed it, and then they had to override the veto with voters uh, in the House, in the state Senate from his own party whose campaigns he had funded right, who wept, who wept openly. openly that they had to go mm -hmm. against Governor Rauner, who had funded their campaign. They would like to yes. fund schools. You know what? Every one of those people have in common. They're all Mike Madigan cronies, <laughs> Blue Gal. No, they're not. All of them. Cronies. Cronies. Also, also and didn't he, all... he uh, pretend to be a communist and try to donate money to J.B. Pritzker? <laughs> I have a jar of pennies. I have a, and he was wearing a bad fake Lincoln beard. Like, no, we know it's you. We know it's you. You drink, you've got that Carhartt fake Western vest thing you got. he wears all Look, the time. Two minutes after, yeah, Carhartt. Yeah, I'm a cowboy. I'm a cowboy. No, you're not. You're a billionaire. And two minutes after you've lost, you're going to be in fucking Italy. He so told we people know that he, if, if he loses, yeah. he's going to go to Italy. Yeah, I'm a cowboy. Because that's, that's he also, being loyal to your state. 
<laughs> yeah, not 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 uh, not projecting too much there, no. but you know, I'm out yeah. of here. Uh, um, the, the, the soil and water conservation programs that he proposed be eliminated. Uh, on three different occasions, he also tried to take credit for those. <laughs> he also decided that it would be a really good thing to say that Champaign-Urbana, you know, where University of Illinois yeah. is and a bunch of important Illinois companies, uh, to mention that there's there's not much of a workforce there. And it's really hard to keep a company of more than six people in that region. Yeah, he said that before. So, you know, a bunch of, that was during the campaign. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that, that uh, Champaign-Urbana is not a hub of economic activity it's like a shit really it's <laughs> shit like a shit country hole. i'm president i'm president of a shithole state where the university yeah. of illinois is yeah. the main yeah. branch of the university of illinois yeah. is um, yeah okay I, I, do, I do want to mention one thing about uh glenn beck uh, if we have time real quick All right. yeah i have a post about glenn beck you should read it it's good um <laughs> it's good i read it and it goes through the whole history of glenn beck and it's really important to remember that the whole tea party thing was basically a uh glenn beck fan convention Yes. That was uh, the mainstream Beltway media decided to pretend was an actual political movement right. of brand new voters. It never, it never was. And the Glenn Beck. It, Glenn Beck it, was it, paid a million bucks to promote that. Yeah. And Fox was in right. on it. Yep. He was Fox News number one um, lunatic, you know, whipping guy for, for years. But Glenn Beck, after he uh, backed Ted Cruz and after that shit all fell apart, Glenn Beck was a never Trumper. Um, Glenn Beck and I, I, I showed the, the path that never Trumpers take. And he's like, this is what an early adopter looks like. First, you get invited on the Charlie Rose show. Then you get Anna Marie Cox to interview you in a nice, friendly way for the New York Times, which is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Then everyone else, now that you've been on Charlie Rose and you've been in the New York Times, everyone goes, my God, has Glenn Beck reformed? Has he changed? Perhaps he's turned over a new leaf. And then you, you go on public radio and you're in the Atlantic and you're in the Washington Post. And then when that doesn't work, you suddenly discover, rediscover your inner Trump and say, I'm going to wear a MAGA hat and I'm voting for Donald Trump in 2020. He really thought that he would get back by being an ever Trump or he would get back to what he was as sure. Glenn Beck at Fox. Sure. And it turned out, no, we're happy with you right there at your little podcast over there. Oh. And I've got to find another way to get back yeah. to the million dollar club. Yeah. Uh, last but not least. Uh, Better Call Saul is a genius show, and you should all watch it. Yeah, we enjoy if if you get a chance to stream it, it really is. This last episode, we were just, just in awe of the so good. season finale. It was just amazing. We are thinking about the victims of the hurricane, and we want to wish them the very best. We do. We have people in Florida. It shouldn't matter if you have people there or not, but we do, yeah. and and uh, our people are fine. But um, it's terrible. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Tigger. Tigger is a tiger-striped goofball, and you should go visit Tigger at our Facebook page and website. You can send your Internet Kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have PayPal, postal address information, and uh, GoFundMe, and all kinds of opportunities for you to support the show, including swag. Yes, we do. Proleftpod.com. Mm -hmm. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties would like to know, where is Kanye's motherfucking flag pin? Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.